Silk, a symbol of luxury and elegance, has captivated civilizations for centuries with its soft texture and shimmering appearance. In the present day, the silk industry has grown to a mammoth size with a market cap of $18 billion. But how did this magical fabric come to be and how is it made today? Silk's history can be traced back to ancient China where it was initially discovered around 2700 BCE. Legend has it that the Chinese empress Si Ling Shi discovered silk when a cocoon fell into her tea unraveling its fibers. Recognizing its potential, the Chinese guarded the secret of silk production for centuries, creating a valuable commodity that became highly sought after along the Silk Road. The primary source of silk is the Bombyx Mori silkworm, known for its ability to produce fine and soft silk. The life cycle of the Bombyx Mori begins with eggs laid by the adult moth. The larvae emerge from the eggs and feed on mulberry leaves. In the larval stage, the Bombyx is the caterpillar known as the silkworm. The silkworm spins a protective cocoon around itself so it can safely transform into a chrysalis. In nature, the chrysalis breaks through the cocoon and emerges as a moth. The moth's mate and the female lays 300 to 400 eggs. A few days after emerging from the cocoon, the moths die and the life cycle continues. To make silk, however, the chrysalis is destroyed before it can emerge from its cocoon and the silk is extracted from the previous silk filament. This practice is known as sericulture and has been developed over the centuries into a precise science. It begins with the breeding of silkworms. Only the healthiest moths are selected for breeding. Their eggs are categorized, graded, and tested for infection. Unhealthy eggs are burned. Once the eggs are incubated, they usually hatch within seven days. They emerge at a mere one-eighth of an inch long and must be maintained in a carefully controlled environment. In the past, the eggs hatched in the summer, which coincided with the mulberry trees regaining their leaves after shedding them in winter. These eggs hatched within 25 days of the warming weather, with warmer weather hastening the hatching process. However, with the sophistication of technology, sericulturalists can manipulate factors such as temperature and light exposure to mimic the onset of spring and achieve greater breeding and hatching rates, increasing the production of silk. Once hatched, the larvae, or silkworm caterpillars, are fed a diet of mulberry leaves every hour over 25 to 30 days. They voraciously consume these leaves, growing rapidly during this stage. From one eighth of an inch, the worms grow in size to 3.5 inches. Due to their size growing rapidly, they also shed their skin a total of four times within this process. Each stage of this growing and shedding process is known as an instar. Because mulberry trees play a crucial role in silkworm cultivation, farmers meticulously tend to mulberry orchards, ensuring an abundant supply of leaves to feed the silkworms. The quality of mulberry leaves directly influences the quality of silk produced. As the larvae grow, they secrete silk proteins through specialized glands, forming a protective cocoon around themselves. The insoluble protein-like fiber is called fibroin. The fibroin is held together by sericin, a soluble gum secreted by the worm, which hardens as soon as it is exposed to air. Generally, one cocoon produces between 1,000 and 2,000 feet of silk filament, made essentially of two elements. The fiber, called fibroin, makes up between 75 and 90 percent, and sericin, the gum secreted by the caterpillar to glue the fiber into a cocoon, comprises about 10 to 25 percent of silk. Other elements include fat, salts, and wax. To make one yard of silk material, about 3,000 cocoons are used. After the silkworms complete the cocoon stage, the next step involves carefully harvesting the cocoons. Timing is critical as it impacts the quality and strength of the silk fibers. Before harvesting, the chrysalis inside the cocoon is destroyed by either stoving or stifling the chrysalis with heat. The cocoons are then transported to a filature, a factory where cocoons are processed into silk thread. In the filature, the cocoons are categorized based on a variety of factors including color and size. To unravel the silk threads from the cocoon, they are first boiled in hot water. This process softens the sericin, making it easier to separate the individual fibers. The softened cocoon is then carefully unwound, and the silk fibers are reeled onto spools. As each filament is nearly finished being reeled, a new fiber is twisted onto it, thereby forming one long, continuous thread. Saracen contributes to the adhesion of the fibers to each other. This delicate process requires skill and precision to avoid breakage and ensure long, continuous threads. The end product, the raw silk filaments, are reeled into skeins. These skeins are packaged into bundles weighing 5 to 10 pounds called books. 
The books are further packaged into bales of 133 pounds and transported to manufacturing centers. Finally, the silk threads undergo a twisting process to create silk yarn. The twisting imparts strength and durability to the yarn, ensuring the final fabric is resilient. Traditionally, silk weaving was a meticulous handcrafted process. However, with advancements in technology, mechanized weaving has become prevalent. Both methods have their unique characteristics, with hand weaving often associated with intricate designs and mechanized weaving emphasizing efficiency. Silk threads are threaded onto looms where the interlacing of warp and weft threads begins. The warp threads are the set of yarns or threads that run lengthwise in a woven fabric. They are typically placed on a loom before weaving begins and are stretched tightly from the top to the bottom of the loom. Warp threads are considered the foundation of the fabric, providing stability and strength. They are usually stronger and more tightly twisted than weft threads. In the final woven fabric, the warp threads run parallel to the selvage, the finished edges of the fabric. The weft threads, also known as filling or woof, are the threads that run horizontally and are interlaced with the warp threads during the weaving process. Weft threads move back and forth across the width of the loom, passing over and under the parallel warp threads to create the woven pattern. The weft is inserted at right angles to the warp. Weft threads are generally softer and less tightly twisted than warp threads. They play a crucial role in determining the feel and appearance of the fabric. To achieve the distinctive softness and shine of silk, the remaining saracen must be removed from the yarn by soaking it in warm, soapy water. Degumming decreases the weight of the yarn by as much as 25%. After degumming, the silk yarn is a creamy white color. It may next be dyed as yarn or after the yarn has been woven into fabric. The silk industry makes a distinction between pure dye silk and what is called weighted silk. In the pure dye process, the silk is colored with dye and may be finished with water-soluble substances such as starch, glue, sugar, or gelatin. To produce weighted silk, metallic substances are added to the fabric during the dyeing process. This is done to increase the weight loss during degumming and to add body to the fabric. If weighting is not executed properly, it can decrease the longevity of the fabric, so pure dye silk is considered the superior product. After dyeing, silk fabric may be finished by additional processes such as bleaching, embossing, steaming, or stiffening. The majority of commercial silk is derived from mulberry silkworms. Mulberry silk is celebrated for its fine texture, natural sheen, and versatility, making it suitable for a wide range of products, including clothing, bedding, and accessories. Derived from wild silkworms, tusser silk has a coarser texture and a natural, earthy hue. It is often used to create ethnic and traditional garments. Exclusive to Assam, India, Muga silk is renowned for its golden yellow color and durability. It is often used to create traditional Assamese attire and is considered a symbol of prestige. While silk production has evolved over millennia, man-made fibers such as polyester, nylon, and acetate have replaced silk in many instances. But many of the qualities of silk cannot be reproduced. For example, silk is stronger than an equivalent strand of steel. Some recent research has focused on the molecular structure of silk as it emerges from the silkworm in order to better understand how new, stronger artificial fibers might be constructed. The next time you see a silk fabric, you can truly appreciate it now that you know the work behind the scenes. If you liked this video, check out our channel for more.